All right. Hi, everybody. We've gotten a lot of emails about Panopto over the last couple of days since we did the integration. Uh, some of you have said, yeah, you love it. Some of you have said, you know, you don't love it. Uh, but we have gotten some ones that said, hey, I'm trying to use this and I've gotten stuck in this on this thing. Uh, a couple of very common questions. So what we want to do is just simply walk through the entire process of taking a meeting, scheduling it in Zoom, recording it, and making it available to your students. Walk through that whole process, kind of hit a few of the key questions, some of the stumbling blocks some of you have run into, and just walk you through that. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna, I'm gonna practice class here, and the first thing for a lot of you is you're gonna notice that Zoom is no longer in your dashboard. And we are sorry for that, but we did have to delete it and do a new install in order to make this work. So all you do is you simply click on Settings, down on this left-hand navigation, it's down at the bottom, and then on these tabs here, click on Navigation, and this is your course navigation, and if you scroll down to the bottom, these are your disabled apps, and you just click on Zoom and change it to Enable, and you will see it down at the bottom there. Now, while you're in here, if you haven't done this, I cannot recommend strongly enough, tidy up the navigation menu, especially since we've added a lot of features, uh, some you use, some you don't, make it a lot easier for, for your student. For example, a lot of you guys lecture every day or almost every day on Zoom, so I'm gonna click and drag this up to the very top. It's the single most important link that I have. So you can reorganize these, you know, if you wanna move your syllabus up or something like that. If there's anything your students don't use, like we don't use collaborations, you can disable it, conferences, disable, you know, if you're not taking role, you can disable attendance. Um, you know, so you can kind of go through and make things right. I definitely would disable Labster dashboard. Sorry for the fact that it ended up in all of your dashboards, but you can yell at them, not me, because it's their program. Um, so you kind of get this tidied up, and then when you're done, really important, especially if you spend five minutes getting it perfect and dragging stuff up and down, please click on save. Otherwise, it's gonna erase all of your changes. You won't get a warning saying you're about to do that. So make sure you click on save. And now you notice right up here next to home, I've got that Zoom link there. Okay, so that's the first thing. You make the Zoom link active. Once you've done that, let's click on it. And so for almost all of you, it's gonna open up a screen and this tab says Rich LTI and you'll see uh, schedule a new meeting there. Okay, a few of you have said, hey, it's not opening. I'm not certain why that is. You know, maybe it's the security settings on your computer. It's blocking a pop-up or external tools. So you should at the very least see this. If you cannot launch LTI Pro, please click here. If you click on that link, as you notice, it also opens up the exact same. So one way or another, you should get to this scheduling. Another quick word, we had a bunch of you email us, to say, email us and say, hey, I can't find my recordings. If it's not in your upcoming meetings, you have this link up here that says all my Zoom meetings recordings. If you click on that, you should see ones that were scheduled in, uh, for example, the past integration that we had. So you should see everything in here, okay? So I'm gonna go into course meeting recordings, and that's right here. Uh, and then I'm gonna click on schedule a new meeting. So I click on that. So I just go through and fill everything out. For example, here's the topic. By default, that's gonna choose your course name. You might wanna put something like Monday lecture or Wednesday virtual office hours or something like that. You've got a description. Uh, again, put anything in there important. One thing I would definitely recommend is if it's mandatory or optional, you might wanna say that to them, you know, like these are optional office hours or this is a mandatory lecture from nine to 10, something like that. So you can put your description in uh, then you go to when it's going to be. So I'm going to make this a Monday morning lecture. So it's going to start next Monday. And it's not going to start at 1 a.m. We're going to start it at, let's say, 9 a.m. And some of us get flustered, including me, by the fact that there's no end time. You have to actually do the math, you know, like if it's from 7.30 to 1, figure out how many hours that is. So I'm going to make it an hour and a half lecture. Um time zone we should leave obviously and then recurring meeting a lot of you have asked about this this is how you make it like every Monday or an entire week so I'm going to click on recurring meeting and then I make it weekly so every week I want these meetings on and I already said it was Monday I'm going to make it Monday Wednesday and Friday so now it's going to make it every week that nine o'clock until 10 30 on Monday Wednesday and Friday and then most of us want this to go until the end of the quarter. So I'm gonna say that it's gonna end on December 18th. 
Okay, so that's setting it up for schedule and now we have our security settings and I know a lot of you know this, but just to walk you through it real quick, registration required, you probably don't want, that's for doing a formal meeting like for example, Lynn's Town Halls where we want everyone to register in advance. You're probably not gonna want that. Passcode is 100% up to you, like a lot of these things. Um, if you require a passcode, it does make it much more secure. You can enter a passcode there, so that's great. The downside of that is it's really easy for people to lose the passcode, not be able to find the email, you know, especially for on their phone or something like that. So it does make it more difficult for people to get in. On this and other things, I would kind of use your basic common sense. If you're teaching a smaller class, it's only four students or eight students and you know all of them, I wouldn't worry about it, okay? On the other hand, if you're teaching like English 101 or human relations and you've got you know, 20, 25, 30 people coming into the class, you don't have that sense of community, especially at the beginning, go ahead and set a passcode, no problem at all. But again, that's your discussion or your decision as an instructor. What's more important, making it easier for people to get in and get started or making it more secure? So that's the passcode. You also have the waiting room. Again, this if you click it, it means that people can't come directly and you get to see that they're waiting and manually let them in. So that's more secure. The downside of that is you have to do that, which means if you're lecturing and you're not paying attention to that waiting room, someone might be in there for 15 minutes, uh, even leave out of frustration because you never saw they were there and you didn't let them in. So that's kind of the downside. Again, you can choose. Um, I'm going to turn it off and I'm going to turn the waiting room off. Please don't tell Agnes, but I tend to be a low security person. Um, I want to make it as easy as possible for my participants to get in. I would always leave my video on. They can turn it off manually if they want, uh, but you want to give them that capability. And I would always click both for audio. Uh, the basic thing here is if one of your students doesn't have a mic in their computer, they can also call in to the meeting. So it'll give them that availability. Uh, meeting options, enable join before host. Uh, again, it's a security thing. If you have a small class and you have no problem with them being in there, you know, at 745 before you arrive at eight, allow that. If you say, Ugh, that's a recipe for disaster. I don't want anyone in there without me. Turn it off. And I always like mute participants upon entry. As soon as you don't mute people, the second you do that, you're gonna have someone coming in 10 minutes late to the meeting yelling, hey, who's gonna pick up Junior? You know, and disrupting the class. So I just always like muting it and let them unmute themselves when they want. It also saves, honestly, it saves your students embarrassment too. I mean, we've all done that where we forgot that and we're yakking away. And finally, you know, we get the, hey, mute yourself in the chat menu. Okay, uh, and then this record the meeting automatically. If you're doing a six hour lab, I wouldn't record it. There's probably not a ton of value to it uh, for the whole six hours. So you're gonna wanna turn it on when you're talking about something important. On the other hand, if you, if you do a 45 minute lecture every day or every Monday, and you know you wanna make that available to your students and you're like me and you tend to brain cramp and completely forget to hit the record button, then click on record the meeting automatically and I always like in the cloud, okay? So we're gonna do that and then when I'm done, I've made all my selections, I simply click save, okay? And it's now created. We're gonna come back in a second and start it, but what I wanna show you guys is if I go into this room, back into Canvas, this is the first part of the integration. If I click on calendar, I was able to schedule in Canvas and as an added bonus, you'll notice when I come up to the calendar and switch over to October, ta-da, there it is, every Monday and Wednesday and Friday at 9 a.m. This goes into your calendar. Even better, it goes into all of your students' calendars and all of their to-do lists and all of their course streams, and it has the link in it, you'll notice. So it's very nice. It puts it right there automatically. This really cuts down on the amount of work. You don't have to email it out. You don't have to distribute to everybody. It's just in their calendar, in their course stream, in their to-do list, so they can get there on their own. Okay, now one question we do get is, hey, it's not there. Over here on this right side, you have your list of all your calendars and you'll notice that my Zoom practice class is turned on. Uh, sometimes your class isn't turned on. And so you'll notice when I unclick this, um, some of the classes up here, my Zoom sessions that I already had vanish, okay? 
So if I turn on, I think this one puts on the ones that we just recorded, yep, and then other ones here. So you can turn the calendars on and off. You also might wanna make your students aware of that if they can't find it, that, oh, make sure that you have, you know, whatever it is, HVAC 110 turned on, and then they'll see it in their calendar if they're in that class, okay? So that's just a quick note, but it does put it in there. It makes it really easy for the students to get to your Zoom sessions, okay? So let's go back here, whoops and click on home and then if we go back to here we have this meeting if i click on start this meeting i'm going to go ahead and just start it now so you can see what it looks like and it's starting up and we're in a zoom meeting oh that's very dark because it's late at night so my apologies for that but you can vaguely see me you know, blah, 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 we're starting the class and I'm about to hit record. Again, a best practice, I like giving people a quick countdown, warn everybody, hey everybody, just a quick notice, I'm turning on the video in five seconds, you know, so if you need to hit mute, if you need to turn your camera off, you know, you want to erase your last name, anything like that, but I'm going to click on record in three, two, one, and then I click on record to the cloud and continue. And you'll see up here in the top left corner that it's now recording. So I'm going to do the testing one, two, testing one, two, and then click on stop so that it can process a lot faster. Yes, I want to stop it. And that's it. And you should see a little notice there saying you will get an email notification when the cloud recording is ready. So let me shut down Zoom. And meeting. And let's go back into my course. Okay, so I'm here, and here comes the part that can get a little bit frustrating. You are in this course, you just recorded it, and so you click on Panopto Recordings, and it loads, and you go, ah, I just recorded this, but it says this folder contains no videos. So this is the part where we get all the nasty emails from everybody, so let's walk you through um, what you can do on this. So... The basic problem we're dealing with here is that Panopto has found your recording in the cloud. It pulled it into Canvas. It deleted it from the cloud. So it's now in Canvas to make it much easier for you. It's not out in Zoom, but it has to have a static address. So it can't say, oh, my English 101 courses, I'm going to pull into English 101. My English 102 courses, I'm going to pull into 102. Pull my 103 videos into 103. It can't do that. So what it does is it has one folder. Uh, it's called Meeting Recordings, and it puts everything in there. So you'll notice up here where it says Practice SID Course, if I click on my drop-down menu, I will see Meeting Recordings in my folder, and you should see that too. If you click on that folder, you'll now see all of your recordings there, including this one that I just did. So let me just, since this, one's, this part's really important, let me do it a second time. We go into Panopto Recordings. And especially after you've only recorded one, you won't see it anywhere. So you click on that drop down menu and go find meeting recordings. If you don't see it, you might have to start typing in here. And it should be meeting recordings in my folder. Sorry, I've got a ton of them because I'm an admin. So I have all the meeting recording folders, but there it is right there, meeting recordings. And now you should see the video that you just did. Okay, so you've got really a couple of options, but the two most common things are you can take this video, pull a link from it, and then use that link. You know, you can send an email out to people, you can post an announcement, uh, you can post a video on a page or an assignment, something like that. Um, that works. One of the problems that we're finding from people is they're running into all sorts of issues with permission. Like they think they give everybody permission to it, but students can't access it. Or even worse, uh, you know, in a lot of people's minds, they give permission to the entire universe to see the video when they don't want that. Um, so if you feel comfortable with that, if it's working out for you, great. That's a perfectly valid thing. You would go into here and click on share and you'll see both a link or embed code down here. Either way, you would take these and then copy and paste those again into a Canvas announcement, into a page, something like that. Uh, what I think is actually an easier thing is to take all of your videos and just put them in the Panopto recordings. That's a pretty common sense thing for your students. It's a Panopto recording, so I'm going to click on Panopto recording in order to find it. So we just put our mouse on here, don't click on anything, and you'll see the five kind of edit buttons come up. 
And so just click on settings. So I put my mouse here and I click on settings. And you'll notice, as we said, the default is it's set that this is going to go into meeting recordings. So what you need to do is click on edit. And then pull down. And again, I've got way more classes than anybody else. So I'm going to have to type and find it rather than the drop down. And here we are, Practice SID course. So again, as you start getting more folders, you might have to type it in as well. Right now, it's probably just a nice, simple drop-down folder. But I click on Practice SID. As I've said a couple of times already today, make sure you click on that Save button. And it is now going to move. And you notice my Meetings, recorder, my meeting recordings folder is now empty. And when I click on Panopto Recordings, it's now there. The nice thing about that is in addition to being a nice place for me, all your students will automatically have access to it. So if you just tell them, hey, the video from today is posted, or if they know that you always post it after class, they come into the class, they click on Panopto Recordings, and there it is waiting for them. Okay, so that's a quick or not so quick walkthrough on how to do it. I hope this makes it a lot easier for you guys. Uh, if you're running into any problems, please don't hesitate to shoot us that email, give us a phone call, and let us kind of get stuff configured for you. Uh, I do apologize. Again, I know some of you have run into some real brick walls in this case, and we apologize for that. But in almost every case, once we kind of walked people through it and made sure we got it configured right, it's worked really well and we actually have gotten some feedback from instructors saying, man, this is so much easier. My students love it because all the videos are just right here in Canvas and they're super easy for them to find. And that's really our goal is to make this as easy as possible for you and for your students.